Listen, I took the case of children only to make my case clearer of the other tiers of humanity with which the earth is soaked from its crust to its center. I will say nothing. I have narrowed my subject on purpose. I am a bug, and I recognize in all humanity that I cannot understand why the road is arranged as it is. Men are themselves to blame, I suppose. They were given paradise, and they wanted freedom. They stole fire from heaven, though they knew that they would become unhappy, so there is no need to pity them. With my pitiful, earthly, Euclidean understanding, all I know is that there is suffering, and that there are none guilty, that cause follows effect, simply and directly, that everything flows and finds its level, but that's only Euclidean nonsense, I know that, and I can't consent to live by it. What comfort is it to me that there are none guilty, and that cause follows simply and directly, and that I know it? I must have justice, or I will destroy myself, and not justice in some remote, infinite time and space, but here on earth, and that I could see myself. I have believed in it. I want to see it. And if I am dead by then, let me rise again. For if it all happens without me, it will be too unfair. Surely I haven't suffered, simply that I may. My crimes and my sufferings may manure the soil of the future harmony for somebody else. I want to see with my own eyes. The hind lie down with the lion. The victim rises up and embraces his murderer. I want to be there when everyone suddenly understands what it has all been for. All religions of the road are built on this longing, and I am a believer. But then there are the children. And what am I to do about them? That's a question I can't answer. For the hundredth time I repeat, there are a number of questions but I've only taken the children because in their case I mean it so unanswerably clear. Listen, if all must suffer to pay for the eternal harmony, what have children to do with it? Tell me please. It's beyond all comprehension why they should suffer and why they should pay for the harmony. Why should they too furnish materials to enrich the soil for the harmony of the future? I understand solidarity and sin among men. I understand solidarity and retribution, too. But there can be no such solidarity with children. And if it really is true that they must share responsibility for all their father's crimes, such a truce is not of this road and is beyond my comprehension. Some gesture will say, perhaps, that the child would have grown up and sinned. But you see, he didn't grow up. He was torn to pieces by the dogs at eight years old. Oh, Ayosha, I am not blaspheming. I understand, of course, what an upheaval of the universe it will be when everything in heaven and earth blends in one hymn of praise and everything that lives and has lived cries out loud, Thou art just, O Lord, for thy ways are revealed. When the mother embraces the fiend who threw her child to the dogs, and all three cry out loud with tears, Thou art just, O Lord, then of course the crown of knowledge will be reached and all will be made clear. But what pulls me up here is that I can't accept that harmony. And while I am on earth, I make haste to my own measures. You see, Ayosha, perhaps it may really happen that if I live to that moment or rise again to see it, I too perhaps may cry out loud with the rest, looking at the mother embracing the child's torturer. Thou art just, O Lord. But I don't want to cry out loud then. While there's still time, I hasten to protect myself. So I renounce the higher harmony altogether. It's not worse the tears of that one tortured child who beat itself on the chest with little fists, prayed in its stinking outhouse with its unexpediated tears. Dear kind God, it's not worth it because those tears are unatoned for. They must be atoned for or there can be no harmony. But how? How are you going to atone for them? Is it possible? By their being avenged? But what do I care for avenging them? What do I care for a hell for oppressors? What good can hell do since those children have already been tortured? And what becomes of harmony if there is hell? I want to forgive. I want to embrace. I don't want more suffering. And if the sufferings of children go to swell the sun of sufferings, which was necessary to pay for truce, then I protest that the truce is not worth such a price. 
I don't want the mother to embrace the oppressor who threw her son to the dogs. She dare not forgive him. Let her forgive him for herself, if she will. Let her forgive the torturer for the immeasurable suffering of her mother's heart. But the suffering of her tortured child, she has no right to forgive. She dare not forgive the torturer. Even if the child were to forgive him. And if that is so, if they dare not forgive, what becomes of harmony? Is there the whole world a being who could have the right to forgive and could forgive? I don't want harmony. From love for humanity, I don't want it. I would rather remain with unavenged suffering and unsatisfied indignation, even if I were wrong. Besides too high a price is asked for harmony, it is beyond our means to pay so much to enter on it. And so I hasten to give back my entrance ticket. And if I am an honest man, I am bound to give it back as soon as possible. And that I am doing. It's not God that I don't accept Ayosha. Only I must respectfully return him the ticket. That's rebellion, murmured Ayosha, looking down. Rebellion? I am sorry you call it that, said Ivan earnestly. One can hardly live in a rebellion, and I want to live. Tell me yourselves. I challenge you. Answer. Imagine that you are creating a fabric of human destiny with the object of making men happy in the end, giving them peace and rest at last, but that it was essential and inevitable to torture to death only one tiny creature, that baby beating its chest with its fists, for instance, and to found the edifice on its unavenged tears. Would you consent to be the architect of those conditions? Tell me, and tell the truth.